Hi, Laura. Welcome. Welcome. I see you already. You're already there. So we have a guest talk. We have a guest talk with Laura. Just do a small introduction, just uh, for those who have not met her before. And then, yeah, I just hand it over to Laura. So let me just share the screen. Okay, so oops, Nastasia, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry for that. Uh, so, as I was saying, we have Laura today here. Thanks for joining us. And Laura is a member of uh, Ten Academy Technology Council. Currently, she's uh, she's working as a data science project manager at Pivot Bio. And uh, for she has enjoyed mentoring Ten Academy interns hired at Pivot Bio. I know most of you already met Ada, part of the people that actually uh, worked with with Laura. So Laura also cultivates resilient teams that turn hope into reality. She has devoted the USA and uh, her domain experience runs across the science, project management, systems, engineering, human centered design, renewable energy, agriculture, sanitation, and village water treatment. A lot of things. Uh, I think that our guest speaker is experienced in so many things. So she's also passionate about improving access to technical training and STEM job opportunities for youth in the African continent. And uh, previously, she has worked as a project manager and trainer for WeCode, an initiative to train Rwandan women in software, QA, QC, and connect them to jobs. So because of the vast experience that Laura has, we so okay, maybe let's have her join and she will be speaking mainly on these three things that is growth versus a fixed mindset understanding your client and communicating with them and teams as opposed to superstars so just over to you laura it's nice to see you again as always You're muted. <laughs> Yeah, and can you hear me now? Yes. All right, thank you. Thanks, Anastasia, for the introduction. And I mean, I'm, I'm a teacher of training, so I've worked in technical fields for my whole career, um, which at this point is probably like 15 years now, 15 years long career. And I think what's interesting to me is, you know, I've used a lot of technical skills and learned a lot of technical things, but when I think about what has really changed my career or what has changed my job opportunities or what has changed how I think about the world, they're actually soft skills. And so when um, Arun uh, was asking for hundreds of people who are willing to give a talk, I was like, well, you know, what's really changed for me is thinking about the soft skills that go about my work and also, they've really changed how I learn technical skills. Um, and I found them pretty powerful, so I, I wanted to be able to share them with you all. And uh, yeah, I guess I will just jump right in. Because part of my background is that like, I've, I've done both um, hardware engineering and software engineering and data science. So, um, and I think one thing is that, as you saw, I've done a lot of different things, but what that means is every time I start a new job, I have to learn from scratch, right? Um, I, I, really, I learn something in university or training that sets me up perfectly for a job, I'm always learning from scratch. And uh, that's a skill that I really value and it's helped me a lot. Um, and one of the things, that has helped me get those called growth mindsets. It's usually, it's a combination, well, usually growth mindsets and fixed mindsets. 
and I think there's a chat board. So if you've heard growth or fixed mindset before, maybe just type a note in the chat that it's something you're familiar with, or maybe you haven't heard something. Type something in the chat about what we know about growth or fixed mindset. So to work, I see one not familiar from people. That's yeah, that, that's very um hopefully it shows how far interesting and feel free to type in the chat at any time if you have questions or something comes up for you. I might ask for Anastasia's help because I'll be sharing my screen. I'm not sure I'll be able to see the chat. Um, but I'm I'm more than happy to be interrupted, to ask a question, to challenge something that I'm saying. That is all. That that would be wonderful, actually. That just create a dialogue. So I will go and share my screen. Um, So, can you see a mindset slide? Actually, I should ask now, can you still see it? Can someone come off of me and tell me if you can see the words growth mindset? Yes, I can. I can yes. Okay. Great. So, um, we're going to start with a question and just think about this for yourself when you're thinking about, I don't know, success in your work or your job or success in life. Um, what do you think is more powerful, practice and effort or intelligence and natural talent? Just think about that for a moment and have an answer for yourself. So another question, I mean, failure is one of the worst things that can ever happen to you. Does that feel true or false to you? Or maybe there's some shades of gray there. Maybe it's good in some situations or bad in others, but just you know, take a moment to think about that sentence and that question. And the last question being, are people born smart? What are, what are your beliefs there? What do, you, what do you think about that question? So there's not actually a right or wrong point answer to any of these questions, but I'm going to be arguing for one side <laughs> today. And it's, it's up to you to decide whether or not you buy my arguments or if you if you see another way about it. But I'm going to be arguing for, for certain answers to these questions. Um, so we're going to watch a quick film real quick. Um, and I'm going to start it. And Anastasia, maybe tell me if you can't hear the sound. Oops, let's see. Nobody's born smart. We all start at zero. Can't talk, can't walk, certainly can't do algebra. Adding, reading, riding, riding a bike. Nobody's good at anything at first. There was a time when Einstein couldn't count to 10. And Shakespeare had to learn his ABCs just like the rest of us. Thankfully, were born to learn. Slowly, surely, you stumble, slip, crawl, fall, and fail, and fall. Frustrating, 
confusing, crying, struggling, until one day, they walk. One foot in front of the other, one idea on top of the next, each wrong answer making the brain a little bit stronger. Failing is just another word for growing, and you keep going. This is learning. Knowing that you'll get it, even if you haven't gotten it yet. Because the most beautiful, complex concepts in the whole universe are built on basic ideas that anyone, anywhere, can understand. Whoever you are, wherever you are, you only have to know one thing. You can learn anything. Okay, so that was a pretty short video, but maybe um, if people could type in the chat anything that you heard in that video. Um, it could be a sentence, it could be a word. What, what did you hear in that video? What, was there anything that um, jumped out at you? Yeah, the video mentioned you can learn anything. Happy to use boring smarts. Those were definitely those in there. Um, yeah, I said probably counts of 10 at some point in time. That's actually one of my favorite sentences. In <laughs> I really like that sentence. Right. Right. Yeah, these are all things the video said. You can also feel free to like, you could write a reaction to like perhaps the video said nobody is brain smart, but maybe you have a different opinion. You're, you're, feel free to write a different opinion there too. Um, I'll go ahead and share my screen again. So Let's see. Right. Okay. These are just some some quotes that I took from there. Knowing that you'll get it if you keep trying, even if you haven't gotten it yet. Um, I, I don't. Part of my background is I grew up in a place where at school it was kind of like you know, pass or fail. Either you have it or you don't have it. And there wasn't a lot of emphasis on this part that like the trying is really, really important. You know, just, you know, even if it feels like I don't have it yet, just to keep trying. As, as I said, this is one of my favorite sentences. This one, I don't think anyone can dispute it. There was a time when Einstein couldn't count to 10 and he had to learn how to do that as well as learn to do all the other amazing things that he did later in life. And one of the sentences at the end, you know, we stumble, we slip, we crawl, we fall, we fail, we fall. It's frustrating, it's confusing. And it, you just keep trying and struggling, and then one day we walk, right? But there was a lot of work and actually a lot of failure that happened before we, we learned how to walk. And that's something that all of us, that's a process that all of us went through. No one was born with the ability to just stand up and walk right away. It was an exploration. Um, there was a lot of failure that was involved before being able to do it as well as you do today. Probably an expert in walking. Um, and the point that I would add at the end, so I think one thing that changed a lot in my life was this part of the beginning. If you embrace failure as a part of learning, then you can learn anything. As I said, I grew up in a school where it was like, they looked more at, you know, did you pass the test or did you fail it? Okay, you failed the test, that's a bad thing. But what I'm going to argue is that actually we learn a lot more from failure. And if we can learn to um, be energized by failure instead of being demoralized, it's pretty powerful. Um, so, 
Just type in the chat in the chat what a neuron is. Yes, a brain cell. Absolutely. Neurons are brain cells. That's a great answer. Um, and is there anything that goes to the gym? I've never tried going to a gym. Just type it into the chat. Um, so, hey, Laura, as the, as the response, yes. your audio keeps, I don't know, there's something with the audio, it keeps disappearing and coming back up. I don't know. So, I'm, I'm not sure how to, I'm not sure how to fix that. I have, I put myself on the best connection I have. Do you think it's something like my mic? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe we try without the mic, see if there's any difference or if it's just a network issue. Okay. Um, I, I unfortunately don't have another. Well, I can try one thing on Anastasia, which is I can try unplugging my mic and you can tell me if it gets better. Yeah, okay, sure. No, 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 no. I can't. I can't hear you. I see your uh, mouth is moving, but I can't hear a thing. <laughs> this is the, this is the best week I have. So what I can do is either talk more slowly. I'm, I'm not sure what else to do, actually. Do you have any ideas? Um, are, you, are you still in Kenya? You could use mobile data. <laughs> that would work much better. Yeah, I'm not seeing data in Kenya. I, I'm actually using mobile data right now. Um, okay. I think I could, I, you know what I could try, though? I could try signing in on my phone and talk to my phone and, and show the slides to the computer. So let me, let me try that real quick. Okay, so this is the sound from my phone. Is there any improvement or there's still the same issue? No, there's an improvement. It sounds very clear. Very clear. Okay. Great. Well, thank you for thank you for bringing that up. Hopefully we can yeah, we can continue. So Okay, so we're, we asked this question about the gym. I saw that note that 10 Academy is a gym. Absolutely, that's a really good response. I like that a lot. Um, and so when we think about going to the gym, there's this really interesting analogy here. Like you can look at this, this guy, he's working out really hard. You could see he's pretty strong. But the question was, was he born strong or did he become that way after going to go practice at the gym so many times. And I think the analogy that really changed my mind about this is, you know, if you've, if you've ever gone to lift weights at a gym, the instructions they'll give you is like, okay, you need to lift this weight until the point of failure, right? Like if you can do a, this bicep curl for 10 times, 
you need to push yourself to do it the 11th time when your arms just want to give up, right? And you can't lift it anymore. And the, the, the logic behind that is that's actually when your muscles improve the most is when they're pushed to the point of failure. Like that's the point where they start getting stronger. Because if you just go every day and lift the same five weights five times, you'll just be at a plateau. You won't get better. Um, and so we think about this guy at the gym, you know, lifting weights. But it turns out that your, your neurons in your brain are very similar. They get stronger when you use them. And they get stronger when you struggle. Um, if you're struggling with learning an, a difficult new concept, or maybe you're in a new environment that you haven't been in before, but it's through the use of your brain and, and struggling often in situations that can kind of be a little frustrating that your brain gets stronger. So yeah, the pictures here just being, you know, the neurons of a person at birth, you could see there's not that many connections there yet. But by the time they're six years old, they've used their brains a lot. They've been exploring their world a lot. And you can see those, those, the connections between the neurons getting stronger and stronger, right? So what's a really important concept when we think about our brains is this concept of neuroplasticity. And that's the idea that your brain is constantly changing and adapting to your environment and also to the challenges that you give it. So on this um, on this screen, you know, this is just a schematic, maybe, you know, of a brain, it's quite general. But what it's trying to represent is like, you know, each of these nodes could be a neuron and you've got the connections running between them, right? And the idea is like, this particular path is really strong, right? That is a pathway that someone has used a lot. And so that pathway between the neurons becomes stronger and more clear and more clear and more clear and easier for them to do. So this is a basic human principle, what happens in our brains. Like the more you practice something, the easier it becomes, but it's partially because you're developing those neural pathways between your neurons. But there's also this converse side, right? That you have a, um, you know, if you've been doing something for a long time and it feels really easy, then when you try something new, it's going to feel hard because you haven't developed that pathway yet. But what's the difference between like um, a hard pathway and an easier one is only that it's something you haven't tried yet, right? So in order to make a pathway easier, you want to be able to try something that's new, that's uncomfortable. And that those pathways aren't strong yet, but because of neuroplasticity, they can become strong. So, um, pardon me one minute. Somebody just knocked on my door. I apologize for that, but I'll be right back. Okay, sorry, I apologize about that. Um, so this is the really important part that your brain is growing and changing until the day that you die, actually. It's gonna continue growing and changing. You can always learn new skills. I think when I was growing up in school, they told us that um, you know, your brain stops developing new neurons when you're 18 or something like that but that's not true the science has debunked that since then and your your brain continues to produce new neurons and new connections until the day that you die so it's not something that just happens when when you're um, younger um, and so then we have this question okay my brain is grow is constantly growing and changing how do we make the most of this superpower and Oh, let's see, this is gonna be complicated because the noise is coming from my phone, so I have to turn it off.
I'm struggling how to figure out how to make the sound on the video come through. Um, Maybe how you did it before was the earphones on the laptop. <laughs> okay, we'll try that. We'll switch it back. So I see you're talking. I'm not sure. No, we cannot hear the voice. I see you talking. <laughs> we cannot hear you, neither can we hear the, the video. Is it on YouTube? Maybe I could try to play it if it's on YouTube, the following the captions. Success. They often like to document past achievements. With a growth mindset, people believe that new abilities can be developed through practice. This view creates the love for learning that most great leaders and artists have in common. For them, life becomes an exciting journey with endless opportunity to figure out new things and advance. To develop a growth mindset, Dr. Carol Dweck the Stanford University professor who coined the term advises leaders, teachers, and parents to celebrate trying. Teachers should applaud students for any grade that they studied hard. Parents should encourage their children to develop any new skill they are interested in. Doing this will make them learn the skill of learning, which will also help them back in the classroom. To illustrate the difference in everyday life, let's observe two imaginary kids. Jay thinks you've either got it or you haven't. Anne knows that she can learn anything if she wants it enough. At physical exercise, Jay avoids challenges. When it's time to jump over the vaulting horse, he's afraid to look stupid and be laughed at. Anne embraces any challenge. It's exciting. It's fun. She knows that failing is part of learning, and if she tries hard, at the end, nobody will laugh at her. Jay avoids feedback. If the teacher tells him how to improve an assignment he is working on, he takes it personally. Anne knows that to improve, she needs to listen to constructive criticism. She also understands that it's not her that is being assessed, but the results of her work on that one day. 
Jay always takes the easy road. For example, he likes escalators and hates to take the stairs. When he is practicing the guitar, he stops the moment he's getting stuck. Anne usually doesn't even take escalators. She jumps up the stairs, counts every step in her head, and enjoys feeling the blood rushing through her veins. She practices the drums every morning for 15 minutes. Not only she always enjoys it, but she knows that oh. it is part of a journey to a more fun life. Anne oh, likes to see others succeed. It inspires her. She knows that if she motivates her friends to get better, she herself is likely to grow too. If his friends try new things and succeed, Jay feels threatened. He's afraid that his success will put pressure on him to do more with his life too. Modern companies look for employees with a growth mindset is they solve problems and persist despite obstacles. To spot the right ones, some asked during the interview whether the job applicant believes if managers are born or if management is a skill learned. Jay thinks that managers are born and gets the job. Neuroscientists they confirm that the brain is much like any other muscle in the body or in training. Studies show that the twins tend to have as compared to their siblings who've stayed with their biological parents. The difference appears to come from the higher educational levels of adoptive parents and shows that nurture is more important than nature. A simple switch in how a person views a situation can mean the world of difference. Not just the outcome of that situation, the outcome of that person's place in life. As the late poet Samuel Beckett once said, never tried ever fail, no matter. Try again, fail again, fail better. What do you think about the concept? Is it overly simplistic? And if you buy the idea, do you believe it is possible to make a permanent switch from a fixed to a growth mindset? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. Okay, thanks Anastasia for helping us out there. Um, I can also share, well, I guess I already shared the link in the chat. So if people want to watch it on their own, they can, you, you have that link there. Um, how about, can somebody now describe maybe what the difference is between a growth and a fixed mindset from what they saw or read in the video? Just type something in the chat. Yeah, absolutely. I see Mohammed wrote about fixed is about fearing from change. Yeah, that's definitely a part of it. Uh, uh, Jane Rose, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, but yeah, growth mindset is willing to embrace new opportunities and challenges while fixed mindset sticks with what is more comfortable. Yeah, that was definitely a part of it. That is definitely a part of it. I think one of the main concepts between fixed and growth mindset is fixed mindset is like i basically am born with the abilities that i have and either i'm smart or i'm not so smart but that's not going to change like either i'm good at math or i'm bad at math but there's nothing i can do to change that really it's just who i am um 
And growth mindset is more that my abilities depend on how much effort and how much practice I put in. And because my brain has neuroplasticity and it grows and it changes, if I put in the practice and the effort, I'm going to change the neural pathways in my brain and I'm going to get better at it. So even if the first time I try something, it's the hardest thing I've ever tried in my life, and I don't think I have any hope at understanding it, that's normal, right? Because I've never tried it before. That pathway is quite weak. And if I put in the practice and the effort, I can make that pathway stronger. It's not something that was set when I was born. It, it, it's it's set by the effort I put in now and how much I'm willing to struggle. Um, so, and the the comments was, the comments were absolutely right on track that there's, there's different parts of that too. Like having a fixed mindset can make you afraid to change because you're like, you know what? I'm not good at jumping over hurdles. I'm not even gonna try. People are gonna laugh at me, right? And the growth mindset being that you know what, I'm not good at jump, jumping over hurdles. I've never done it before, but I'm gonna give it a try and I'm gonna figure it out. Um, and if I if I put in the effort and the practice, I, someday I could be quite good at jumping over hurdles. It might take some time. So um, what? I'll go ahead and share my screen again. So uh, and that, so to kind of dig into this a little deeper, um, let's think about failure and how a, a fixed mindset approach might be versus a growth mindset. So let's, you know, we could go back to my school experience and think about, okay, I just failed an exam. What do you think a fixed mindset might be response to, you know, Laura just failed an exam. I just failed an exam. What do you think if I have a fixed mindset, what might my response be? Um, so you can go ahead and type that in the chat to just give a guess. Um, what would a fixed mindset response be to a, a big failure? Absolutely. You think you are just bad at the subject. Absolutely. That is definitely a fixed mindset. Yep. Yeah, I will never succeed in it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you guys are spot on. An inherited and unchangeable trait. Absolutely. This is like, I'm just bad at science. I don't know how to do this. If you have a chance to drop the subject, you will do that. Absolutely. I'm not good at this. I'm not even going to try. I'm going to do something that's easier. Absolutely. So on the converse side, I just failed an exam. If I have a growth mindset, what do you think my, my response might be to the, to failing that exam? I failed because I tried. Absolutely. To learn lessons. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe it's I got questions five through ten wrong. What 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 didn't I understand? What's you know, what's this is this makes me curious. Like I thought I understood. Uh, I don't know this part of physics, but there's something here that I didn't I didn't know yet. I wonder. I'm curious about this. Like, what 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 haven't I understood here yet? I did not study well, and I have to study harder this time. I failed because I didn't put the effort in. Yeah, that that could be that could be part of the challenge too, that I didn't study hard enough, um, for sure. So. Um, but uh, so what I what I would like to show about the difference between these two mindsets. So we talked 
about fixed mindset. I can't do this. I failed. I will stop trying. The failure takes the energy away from me. It's demotivating. I don't want to do it anymore. With a growth mindset, what the, you know, if I had a really strong growth mindset, it was like, oh, wow, I failed that exam. I totally didn't see that coming, but I can tell that I'm struggling. That means I'm learning a lot. Let me try again and see if I can do better, right? And it's this ideal that like a failure can give more energy rather than taking it away, right? And that in itself can be a superpower. You can imagine the difference become between becoming completely demotivated and actually failing that test and be like, oh, this is so interesting. I'm going to try to figure this out. Like you could see why that'd be quite powerful for someone trying to learn a new skill. Um, and so similarly, if we look at like, this feels so difficult and I'm really struggling, like you all, you know, this science, this chapter in physics, I just don't understand physics. This is so hard. I, this is so hard and it's so frustrating. If I have a fixed mindset, what you might see is I'm not smart enough. This is too hard for me. I will never get this. I don't like how hard this is. I give up which is even one of the comments in the chat earlier, you might drop the subject because it's so hard, right? With growth mindsets, what you see is, oh man, this is so hard, but I know because I'm struggling, I know that means that my neurons are growing, right? My brain is growing, I'm developing those new pathways. And this sense of struggle actually means that I'm on the right track and I'm learning something new. And instead, I want to keep struggling and learning, just like the guy at the gym who, you know, on the 11th time trying to lift that weight, he can't do it. He's at the point of failure. But that's actually where his muscles um, get, get, get the strongest is working till that point of failure. Right. Um, so that's that's just trying to clearly explain what is the difference between fixed mindset and growth mindset. Um, I think the one caveat, well, there's a couple of things that I'll give here is it's easy to write down on a slide, right? But it's, it can be hard to do in practice to cultivate a growth mindset, right? Um, it's not easy to change from one to the other. And the previous video even mentioned that like, even one person, you could have a fixed mindset about one thing, but a growth mindset about something else. So I could have a fixed mindset. I'm not good at science. Or even a fixed um, fixed mindset can be, you know, about a lot of things in life. But uh, on the other hand, I could decide that, you know, growth, uh, sorry, I could decide that um, I can have a growth mindset for exercise, right? Oh, I'm not good at running. I just need to practice more and then I'll get faster. So it's possible that you could have both types of mindsets in different parts of your life. What's been really helpful for me is just trying to move myself towards the growth mindset. And I think the other caveat I'll give here is, you know, even that first, this highlight sentence, failure gives more energy. Like there's a balance here, right? Because at some point you can overextend yourself. You can burn out. Um, it can be too much, right? Too much of a struggle, too much failure. Going back to the gym analogy, there, there is a balance, too, because like when you're lifting weights, you want to move right to that point of failure, that 11th time lifting the weight. But if you don't give yourself time to rest and recuperate and give it another try and you just keep like pushing harder and harder and harder, you can actually damage your muscles instead of allowing them to grow. So I think it's very similar with the brain, like you're looking for that right zone of struggle where you're challenged, you're learning a lot, but you're not burning out. Um, so I think those are two other things that I would add there. Um, so one thing that's been super helpful for me is like when I'm struggling with something, just imagining how the neurons are growing and connecting inside my head can be motivational for me. Um, just to help me like get through something that's tough learning a new skill that i don't know yet oftentimes it feels like this it can be really awkward right i'm just you know a young baby that's figuring out how to walk 
but knowing that as my neurons connect, I'm going to get better and better at this skill. Um, and I think the other part of this is, you know, when I went to university, so most of the time I'm surrounded by people that are a lot smarter than me, like they have a lot more skills than me. Um, and when I went to university, I got really frustrated because it was one of the first times I had interacted with computer programming, actually. And a lot of my classmates were way better at it than me. And it wasn't until, you know, 10 years out of university that I realized that a lot of them had actually started practicing when they were in high school. And I just didn't have that practice at that point. But since I developed that practice in university, I had more time to develop the skill. I realized that it wasn't that they were smarter than me. It was just that they had more practice and I just needed the time to build up the practice. So that is also very helpful in intense situations um, where you're needing to learn new skills quickly. Um, I would encourage you to do this exercise. We'll just take maybe two minutes to do it together. You don't have to write it in the chat. Just write it down for yourself because I think you're already an expert in this and you've done this before especially if you're in 10 academy so just take like two minutes to think about a time where you had a struggle or something you were struggling with you worked hard you improved and think about what were the strategies that you used that were helpful for you and how did you get help from others i really encourage you to like physically write this down if you have a notebook i'm just going to set a timer um, for about two minutes. And yeah, go ahead, go ahead and take that time to think about these questions and, and write it down. And if you're, if you're not writing it down, you're just cheating yourself. <laughs> this could be a very helpful exercise to do. So please just take a few minutes to, to write it down on your notebook. Uh, can you repeat the description of the questions? Sure. Oh, um, yeah, I I was hoping that my sh my screen was showing, but it um, yeah, it's the the questions were a time that you struggled, you worked hard, and then you improved because of your hard work. And the questions are, what strategies did you use? that were helpful for you? And how did you get help from others? It's an important yes. point to think about. Yes, so, so we will be answering the two questions only. Right. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yep, no problem. So we've got about 10 minutes left. I'm just gonna paste the link for this video in the chat and you'll probably be able to listen to it better on your own later. I really recommend it. Let's see if I can. And here's why. I'll just describe why I recommend it. Um, so it's a TEDx talk, but he, he talks about Bobby Fischer, who was like a chess champion. And Bobby Fischer decided that he was going to start learning a new skill, martial arts, and 
it took him a long time, but then he also won a championship in martial arts. And one of the most interesting sentences in that talk, I think, is he's, Bobby Fischer says that, you know, he's not special. He's not anyone smart. Despite winning these championships, it has more to do with how he practices and applies effort to get him into those those places. Like that's a pretty diverse set of skills, right? Um, with uh, chess and martial arts, like completely different skills, but he managed to become a champion in both of them. So if you have some minutes, I would recommend watching it. Um, and so the other, the other part about growth and fixed mindsets is, you, it could be a fixed mindset even to have like a very positive image, which is like, I am really smart at math and physics. Like that's fixed. I'm just really naturally good at it. Um, it can also kind of make you lazy in some ways, right? If you think that if you have this perception of yourself as just being really good at a subject. And so I like that example of Bobby Fischer because he's a world chess champion, right? And he decided he was gonna turn around and make it more challenging, right? He was gonna learn a completely new skill again from scratch, which is martial arts. So I think it's also important to think about this other side of growth and fixed mindset, which is if something is too easy, how do you make it more challenging for yourself to make sure you're in that zone where you're, where you're, where you're struggling a little bit to help your neurons grow? Um, So I think the other sentence that's been really helpful is yet, or even just the word, I can't do it yet. And thinking about the power of not yet, going back to the sentence like Einstein didn't know how to count, we all learned how to walk, but eventually that came really natural to us. And so you can imagine when, when you're at the beginning and it's hard, thinking about, I don't know this yet, right? So we're gonna, I think in the last few minutes, we'll just play this growth versus fixed mindset game. I'm gonna give you a sentence and in the chat, please write if it's fixed or growth mindset and then try to reverse it. If it's fixed, write the growth mindset version of it. If it's growth mindset, write the fixed mindset version of it. So I can't do this. Is it fix your growth and then change it to the other one? Yeah, absolutely. It's fixed. I can't do this yet. Yes, absolutely. Uh, that was an easy one. I just gave it the answer right before. That's great. Yeah, I can't do it yet. Okay, so the next one being, this is hard, but I'll get better with practice. Fix your growth and then switch it to the opposite. Yes, absolutely, it's growth. Yep, absolutely. How would you change it to a fixed mindset? This is hard, I give up. Absolutely, absolutely. Yep, I will quit. Yep. Um, so, yeah, absolutely, growth. It will not get better. Great. So I think we've got this and I know we just have about five minutes left. So I'm actually just going to skip ahead. It seems like people have a really pretty good grasp of fixed and growth mindset. This is the one that I would highlight again, just saying that if you say I'm the smartest person here. Is that fixed or growth mindset? Absolutely. It's fixed mindset. And it, you're you're saying that you're giving a trait that can't be changed or you can't improve more, right? So I think in the last five minutes, what I'm going to talk about is these two elements that have also helped me a lot with technical work. So the first one being um, teams, not super chickens. So when uh, when I was in school and growing up, they put a lot of emphasis on individual achievement, right? Like even the example where I said, I failed a test, right? A lot of our schooling system is 
Laura failed the test. It was my responsibility. It's my responsibility to study hard and it's only my individual achievement. But when you look at the research for just, I mean, a lot of the research actually centers around tech companies. What you'll find is the most innovative companies have a really strong emphasis on teams. Um, and so there's two examples of this. But one of the stories I'll tell is about super chickens, which is a pretty interesting uh, story. You can you can look you can Google it on I think YouTube. There's a few talks about super chickens, but it's the idea that you know, uh, let's say they they did this study where you looked at chickens and how many eggs they produce. And so let's say you want a flock of chickens that are the highest producing. So what do you do? You select for chickens that produce the most eggs, right? Because that's how you get to a highest producing flock. Um, but it turns out when you do that, like the chickens are actually, they're the highest producing, but they're also very aggressive. They, when you select for more eggs, you get these aggressive chickens. And so I guess in this particular case, they pecked each other to death right? They were so aggressive that they fought to death. Um, and so they actually ended up underperforming the control, which was just a normal flock of chickens that was much more diverse, right? And when you look at research from groups like Google, Google did a ton of research about what makes good teams. What they found, they looked at so many different aspects, like what if it's like the collective IQ of the team? Like everyone who has higher IQs, that team is going to do better. Or maybe it's like the team where everyone came from the same university or, you know, you can imagine a lot of different things that they tried looking at. What they found was none of that mattered. Not even like the IQ scores of the people on the team. What really mattered was that um, the team was cohesive, meaning that everyone was able to speak in an equal amount and they felt emotionally safe to do so. So that's a pretty big thing. And I, if I, yeah, I could, I could talk another hour, of course, about like the big difference between teams and individual work, especially because I think a lot of our schooling system pushes for individual superstars. But you'll find that the most innovative teams come from most innovative ideas come from teams that are working together and they're very emotionally um, comfortable with each other. They feel um, they feel comfortable giving debates and everyone is sharing their opinion equally. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, that absolutely with similar results, the diverse collaborative groups produce the most cited papers. Absolutely. That's I definitely agree with that. In the last two minutes, <laughs> the other part that really helped me a lot was my point number two, which is being kind matters most. Um, and I know there's a lot of different types of work environments or school environments where, like, for example, you can have quite an aggressive work environment where people are trying to compete with each other and, you know, climb up the ladder. Um, and so, of course, it, I guess it does depend on the context and where you're at. But from my experience, one of the things I struggled a lot with, again, I'm usually surrounded by people who are smarter than me. So just, you know, feeling um, imposter syndrome, I don't belong here, I'm not smart enough, I'm not good enough, et cetera. Also fixed mindset statements. Um, what really changed that for me was just anchoring on the idea that if I just show up, and I listen to the people around me and make sure that they they know that I'm listening to them and I appreciate their thoughts and they are being heard. That is the main thing that I need to do today. Um, and that really helped a lot because it takes the pressure off of trying to be the smartest and most technically skilled person in the room. And not only that, the research also supports it. There's um, a couple studies that looked at you know technical competence versus kindness and friendliness and again these sound like soft skills but they're actually really powerful uh, what the research found is that people almost always value friendliness and kindness over your technical skill like you and i'm sure you've had this experience too working with someone on a team who's like 
maybe really skilled, but they're a jerk or they're not nice, you probably won't choose to work with them again. You probably wouldn't choose to hire them for your company. Um, and so I think that's another thing that's worth thinking about is that being kind matters most. It probably matters more than the technical skills that you're developing, even when you think about something like career success or climbing the ladder. Um, so yeah, thanks for taking the time to listen to me today. Thanks for bearing with the technical issues and uh, feel free to reach out. I really like thinking about these questions, like how do you build good, good teams? How do you work on fixed versus growth mindset? So if you wanna talk or chat more than, about them, I feel free to reach out to me. Um, I think the work that you all are doing in 10 Academy is really amazing. Um, and so I'm, I'm more than happy to support how I can. Okay, thank you, Laura, for that and for adhering to the one hour. That was uh, very nice. So I did borrow some few minutes from the next from the next session, and I think we can take um, a few questions. Actually, so too while the um, while the, the conversation was going, so I'll just repost them. This was posted uh, like twenty minutes ago, so I've just reposted. We could start with this to. I think the first one is more of a discussion. The second one is uh, more of a question. As we take more questions, if you just have a question, you can prepare to raise your hand or maybe add it on the chats, and then you can just spend around 10 to 15 minutes on the questions before we go to the next session. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I, thanks for pasting those questions in. Um, an inherent conflict between growth mindset and the systems of grades in schools. Absolutely. I completely agree with this. I think that um, kind of the way our schools are designed is a little bit industrial, but they're not really optimized to like bring out the best potential in every student. And so I, I do agree with you. There is a conflict between there about like exploration and trying and failing and the growth that comes from that versus, yeah, just limiting what um, how many times someone is allowed to fail. I think that's a really good observation. Um, Emmanuel, in the case of physical exercise, it's the brain that orders the muscles and body to keep going. In case of building the mindset, yeah, it is still the brain that convinces the brain to keep up the struggle. That's a great question. It is still the brain. I think one of my main understandings about the brain is it's not actually just like one cohesive unit. There's a bunch of different parts uh, that were developed over time. So that's why you can have an argument with yourself right? Um, or even even something that's something behavioral, like you know that you need to exercise to be healthy, but when it goes to put on your running shoes in the morning, you just don't do it, right? Those are actually, those can be two different circuits, two different parts of your brain. So it's a different part of your brain that's convincing you to keep going with growth mindsets, um, but it, it is still your brain that's, that's, that, or that, gives you the motivation to do that. Okay, Emmanuel, I hope that was answered. So before we get to other questions from the trainees, I think I had a question of my own. So you mentioned mm -hmm. maybe it could be in my career and I have a really growth, I have a growth mindset, but then in some situations, I tend to have that fixed method, interchangeable. I think I had that from the video as well. So you also mentioned that some a way to tackle maybe the fixed mindset, it's my career, it's important. I know I need to have a growth mindset. And I just keep telling myself, okay, a neuron is growing. There's a neuron that's connecting. And I was wondering, is there another exercise, something maybe you've tried that I don't know, that could just keep me going. In some in some areas your mind is just my mind is just fixed. Let me use myself as an example. Is there an exercise, maybe something tried and proven, something you've used that could just keep that energy, mm. that failure energy there? Yeah, absolutely. So I think, you know, what What actually popped into mind is some, it's like a little fast exercise. And I, I don't know if it fits your situation exactly. It's also based on research. It's called WHOOP. <laughs> which I'll type into the chat. Um, there's wish, um, let's see, wish, uh, I forget actually what the second O is, but 
So we're missing something there, but observation and plan. Oh, there we go. Whips, wish, observation, obstacle, plan. Okay, so this, I, I thought of this tool because it's kind of a way to get around blocks too. And it, it works on kind of the growth mindset, which is like there's small things that you can do now to move you in a direction. So this can be quite a fast exercise, but when you do it, it, you wish, you think about where would I like to be? I would like to be an Olympic downhill skier, right? Um, and you really like visualize how would that feel for you? Um, what like what would it what would it be like to achieve that goal um that's that's the observation part actually is is sinking into like what would that really feel like and visualizing it the the next two parts are really important which is obstacle and plan obstacle is what is the obstacle in you that is preventing you from getting there um so in this case it could be like i don't think i have the ability to be uh an olympic skier um it could be like i don't i'm not making enough time to practice i haven't researched where i could get skiing training it could be i don't have enough money maybe i need to like earn the money to be able to do that but it's it's thinking about things that are like within your control the obstacles within you that keep you from getting there and the plan could just it doesn't have to be a big plan it could be one step so I'm not making enough time to train. I am going to put one hour on my calendar now to be able to train next week so that I can get one step closer to that. Um, but that's a quick tool that kind of helps connect what is my goal and what is in the growth mindset, what are the obstacles and what are some small things that I can do in that direction. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure if that answers your question, Anastasia, but that's one tool that came to mind. Yeah, it does in a way. Maybe just a way of uh, tackling that fixed mindset. I think I've taken it as a way of uh, responding to that fixed mindset. And I think that helps yeah. in a way. Um, great question. A book on growth versus fixed mindset. Uh, there's no one coming to mind immediately. It's mostly just reading about random studies about it. Um, but there's this really interesting website, which I can, I can paste here. Uh, it's called Barking Up the Wrong Tree. And what's really interesting about this website is he, it's a blog basically about scientific research that can affect your life. Um, he actually wrote a book too. There's a, there's a book called Barking Up the Wrong Tree. Um, I'm just looking up for the blog. There we go, let's see. So I'll paste it here, but it's a, it's a really interesting, yeah, it's a really interesting website that has links to a lot of different research that, that about how, how we behave and how you can work on your own behavior. Or it's, it's a really interesting website. And yeah, and his book is called Barking at the Wrong Tree. Tina, I see your your hand is raised. Feel free to come off mute. Yeah. So, hi. Uh, first of all, thank you for this. Um, I mean, it's a great talk. It's uh, I, I really like I find this topic very interesting. I also like it makes me think uh, about my own behavior. So it's like um, okay, it's uh, thought provoking. Let's say for me. So thank you very much. Uh, I have a question which can be. Um, I wanted to speak because uh, it can be hard to uh, it will be hard to explain, and maybe you cannot uh, 
you will not be able to answer this, but I have a situation and I know what is a fixed mindset thinking there. And I want, uh, if you can come up with a gross mindset, uh, like the opposite, right? So you, you mentioned um, the imposter syndrome, like when you are in a team and you think like, okay, I don't belong here. And this is yeah. a fixed mindset, of course, thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, and you say like, I'm not smart enough. And then um, maybe uh, the opposite thinking is that like, maybe I have something to offer anyway. But sometimes, uh, and this happened to me, so it's not a really uh, a secret, mm -hmm. is that I thinking that, yeah, this is a team that is supposed to do some particular job and it's a limited, uh, like uh, there is a limit, limited number of members basically. And um, if we, I join this team, I'm taking a place that someone else can be here. And mm. then your feeling is guilt, like uh, maybe someone else is better to be in this position. It's not only that I'm not smart enough and people don't see me as smart or whatever. It's about like, if someone better than me comes here, that this would be better for the, for the task or it, I mean, sometimes the task is important, let's say, then you feel like, okay, if I give this up, someone else better than me will take it and it will be better for the end goal in the end. So this is, I think, this is a fixed mindset uh, thinking. Do you have any counter, uh, counter thinking uh, about this? Like, yeah, about the it's the such, yeah, such an excellent question. I think some things that came up for me is one, I can guarantee you there will always be someone that's better than you in that role. Like, right. I mean, that's true for me in everything I do guaranteed somewhere in the world, there's someone who's better at me than me at, at this. Right. Yeah. Um, and so that's a truth, but I think I'm remembering now I saw, you know, the questions we ask ourselves can be powerful too. And I think, of course it, it, it can change on the context. Like I have like, for example, given roles to other people and it's like, oh wow, this fits you really much better than me. And I can really see the, I can really see how this is gonna help you. It's gonna help me, it's gonna help the team. And like stepping back from a leadership role or giving it to somebody. So I, I would say there's not, hundred percent a hard and fast answer but your question is what is like the the growth mindset version of that question there's someone who's better than me and it will be better for the team or the project that they take it over i would one of the questions that comes to mind for me is what is sparking my interest here right the reason why that question comes up is often you know the you know imposter syndrome i'm not good at this the other way you could say it, i mean it just i said that, that there's a lot of people who are going to be better at you in that role there's a lot of people that are going to be worse than you in that role right you're probably or i'll say for myself i'm probably someplace in the middle right there's a lot of people better a lot of people that will be worse but there's there's two things that come up one being um what is it that is sparking me in this project like, I am so excited to learn this. Like, this is what I really want to learn more about. I really want to learn more about renewable energy or hydropower in this project. And that's why I'm here. Rather than evaluating how good I am at it, it's, I think about what am I going to learn here and why am I excited that I'm going to learn that? I think the second thing that comes to mind for me is I'm going to get the quote wrong, but there's like Winston Churchill, somebody like that. He has a quote that's like, you know, um, I can't even remember the quote exactly. I'll just give you the meaning. There's like the people that are inside the ring fighting, right? And they have blood on their face and there's mud. And, and then there's people outside who are like standing and making a criticism, right? It's quite different to be in the ring, you know, helping a project, moving it along, even though it's not perfect, you're not perfect, I'm not perfect. 
and to be outside observing about like, oh, I think there could really be a better fighter in that ring. Um, there's a lot to be said for just being the person that is there and moving things forward, even if it's not perfect, right? Um, I think that that also makes me think of like the sentence that don't let perfect be the enemy of the good, right? I imagine you in any role, you're probably pretty good at it. And thinking about that guilt that there's someone who could do this better, that's probably true. There's someone who could do it worse, that is also true. But you happen to be the person in the ring that is fighting, you're moving that project forward, you're learning from it. And that in itself is really valuable. That struggle is really valuable. Um, I, how does that lend for you? What do you, what do you think about, about that empty non? What comes up for you? I think, well, you, um, it, because um, I think uh, your answer is, um, it made me think actually, I, there are, because there are situations in my, uh, in, in my life, of course, I'm doing something and there is no one else can do this. Like this is a responsibility, mm -hmm. I have to do it. Um, I always think like I can give you the, the example I think I thought about is I have a niece and mm. uh, yeah so I like uh, I take care of her sometimes and uh, sometimes yeah I make mistakes because like uh, uh, when taking care of her and then I think like there is no one else who can do this I'm her aunt there are mm -hmm, people who are better mm -hmm. with their children the people who are better as aunts or whatever but I am, uh, I'm her aunt, there is no one else who can feel this. So I have to be better and I do try to be better. I do, I apologize to her and I try to do better. I read on the internet. I try to read to do how to deal with children and stuff like that. So I, I know from my life, I do better in situations that there is no option. Like I'm the only one who's there. I have to do this job. Yeah. And I don't because I don't spend my time thinking like someone else can do this or can be better than this. So maybe, yeah, so what you said is very useful. Maybe I can do this. I can like try to bring up the like the mindset I have when I don't have the option to give the job to mm. someone else. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I don't know exactly how how I can do this, but I mean I have to think. I mean yeah, you have given me something to to start from. I mean, all of this, yes, I have to, like, uh, this is something that I have to unlearn, I think. Um, anyway, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, thank you for your answer. Yeah, yeah. I think I'll, I, I, I feel one more response coming up, which actually comes from a comment that was earlier in the chat, which is, um, it was about, like, the the research on teams and, their success. And it turns out when you have a diverse team, they're more likely to have a successful output. And I think, unfortunately, for whatever reason, it's more common for women or especially women of color to undervalue like what you're bringing to the table, right? Because even just the fact that you have very different life experiences than I do, um, very different experiences than anyone else on your team, those have a value and your ideas have a value too. So just thinking back to like, you know, in the US, well, I'll, I'll just I'll just speak from my college experience. We had when I when I rolled in engineering school, um, they were pretty strict that we had like people that came in had needed to have high test scores. The attitude is quite different about that today. Um, the idea being like, okay, you can look at test scores as a way of like someone is really qualified to be here or they're not. But what happened was the test scores were just selecting for basically like white middle class students or richer students because they had the money to study for the test. Um, and what's really changing about that is like, you know what, what makes successful teams is like a diverse life experience. and now my engineering college is accepting a lot more like people of color from different economic backgrounds just from the inherent value that they bring from their experience that's like quite different than what you can measure on a test. And so 
There was one more story I read. It was actually about um, a woman of color who was running a company and they asked, you know, some, some leadership change and they asked her if she would be the CEO. And she was like, are you kidding? I can't be the CEO. I'm not skilled at that. Um, but then another like white gentleman raised his hand and he's like, I can try. <laughs> and she looked at him and she's like, you're not, you don't have experience either. Like what, what makes you think that you could, that you could do it? And that's what actually caused her to be like, okay, I can do that too, which is I'm going to raise my hand. I'm going to bring my experience to the table and I'm going to figure this out together. Um, so th those are some other responses that kind of like came up with me that I think that there's quite a value in just you being who you are, the experiences that you have, you're bringing something unique to the table that honestly nobody else can replace. We talked about like, there's some people who could do the job better than you, there's people who could do job worse than you, but you honestly have unique experience that is irreplaceable. Um, and I guess the question about is whether that place is a good match for you, but I think that's that's just one other thing that comes that comes up for me when, when I'm thinking about your question. that's yeah. So yes, uh, I think yeah, these are all things that uh, one can keep in mind. I mean, to remember that uh, yes, uh, the people who are better than the, uh, at this uh, at the time, um, but also there are people who are worse. So who, there are people who are overconfident just because of their life, maybe because of their life experience. They had it, an easier life, let's say. Yeah. So um, I think, uh, yeah, all, all you mentioned is, I think, would be useful. So, so thank you. I feel like I, I said uh, too much. I took a lot of time <laughs> for everyone. I spoke about my life and stuff. But yeah, thank you very much. Thanks. I really enjoyed your question. I think it's a tricky one. Um, Feel free to reach out if you want to debate it with me further. I really like discussions like this. Okay, thank you, Mtinan, for that uh, extensive discussion. I'm sure a few of us picked something from your discussion. I think this one, this is more of a general view from Tibrek. This is a question. Uh, yeah, I see. Schools, what do you think a schooling system should look like to ensure there is a growth mindset? Uh, I don't know the exact answer to that. Uh, I think part of it is, I'm speaking out of my expertise here, but I do have some friends that went to Montessori schools and it's a different approach where it, the kids aren't really given like a set agenda to learn, but there's kind of more like stations where they go to different stations and they're just encouraged to try a lot of different things like there might be like a nature station or a math station or a science station and there's exercises to do there but it's more about the exploration of figuring out what is it that i like to do and how do i get better at it rather than i need to meet i need to pass seven different tests you know and I'm not an educator, I'm not an, an, an expert in education, but that's one thing that comes to mind to me, for me, is giving students more room to explore and fail and try things. And actually, in one of the videos, one of the main things they said was, let's recognize effort. Rather than getting the A on the test or the C on the test, it should really be about how much effort did you put in? Did you study for five minutes and you got an A? Well, that might not be so impressive. Did you study for five hours and you got a C? That's a great effort. That is really impressive how hard you tried. Um, so that, that might be a more coherent answer <laughs> to like, maybe, maybe the one sentence is like, let's look at effort instead of results and reward people for the effort that they put in. Okay, it's to see a system that does that, but... <laughs> Oh, I don't know. So if they don't give scores, I don't know what they focus on. I think the education system is something that can be extensively discussed, especially with the different and diverse cultures that right. we have here. Yeah, even in Kenya, they 
decided to adopt a new system and we don't know if it will work we hope we hope right. it will work yeah. yeah anyway so yeah i like uh -huh. I, I was i think that's great yeah let's not grade people in the first six grades i think that's a great comment empty none okay so if there are no more if there are no other questions i'd just like maybe to say thank you to laura for being with us for the last one hour 25 minutes i know you are busy you are up and also it's i'm really appreciative for just being taking the time to be here with our trainees today and i do hope that our trainees did pick up something especially now that this is our last week and we'll be joining they'll just be going out there and out to the job market and um mm. yeah interacting it's nice to have that that growth mindset as they interact with different people out there so i don't know if we have somebody from the team who would be willing just open to give her side his or her side of a thank you something you've learned from the session before we end anyone you can just raise your hand or unmute and okay. So Emtinan, you've been suggested. I think you did contribute a lot more to the session. <laughs> Emtinan. Yeah, I feel like I took a lot of the time. Maybe, yes, someone else could have taken this time. But yeah, I I, I really, um, this idea of like recognizing what is a fixed mindset and recognizing what what a growth mindset, what, what is it like uh, the thing that you can change to because I think all of us want to change to more of a growth mindset. Uh, this talk was really fascinating. And it's, um, I think, uh, for me at least, and I think for, for my, uh, my colleagues as well, as well we, uh, like we learned some, some um, important concepts. And uh, hopefully it will help us to learn um, um, skills that or i mean thinking like thinking thinking uh, methods uh, let's say or uh, a way of thinking that is going to help us in our lives in general it doesn't mean to succeed in in uh, employment or whatever it's just like in our lives because this has a this can help us in our the quality of our lives let's say uh, in all sides so thank you very much i really appreciate it Yeah, okay. thank you, Emtinan. I there the things that have been helpful for me. I hope you find some of them helpful for you too, and that you continue learning or exploring on your own about some of these concepts. Okay, thank you, Emtinan, for that. Yes, yeah. thank you. Yeah, thank you, Laura, as well, and for the other trainee for just being here for the last. 30 minutes. I don't know if Emilian is here. We've taken 30 minutes of the CBS session. I think we should just release the trainees. And yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for being here today. Thank you. Yeah.